instead of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are standing in a jungle clearing, lost in the wilds of Ecuador, while surrounding you and creeping slowly closer is a party of Popoyan headhunters who are waiting only for the sun to set before making you their prize. Listen now as Escape brings you Ross Murray's exciting story, Incident in Quito. <laughs> Manuel. Hola, Manuel. Huh? Oh, oh, Ramon. Hey, what are you doing here? Mm. It is the first of the month. Already? Already. Oh, I'm, I, I, I'm upset. I cannot even remember the day. Oh. What is wrong, my friend? Would you like some wine? Uh, I would. Oh, wait then, I will get it. Huh? Yeah. Oh, sit, 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 Ramon. Ah, hey, thank you. For you. Eh, hey, gracias. Oh, bueno, eh, sí, sí. You uh, said that you are upset? Oh, yes, yes. Mm. What is it, Manuel? Oh, it is about Senor Harvey. The American explorer? Ah. Uh, it's been a long time since Kiro has had so much excitement, huh? Yes, I know. Uh, to shoot such a beautiful young wife, <laughs> the man must be mad. He is. Truly? Truly? But why should his madness upset you? Oh, uh, I knew him. I did business with him. Well, again, what has this to do with you? Yeah, more wine? Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Your help. Yeah. And yours, my good friend. Uh, well, you yes. uh, Ramon, uh, did you know that Senor Harvey was married once before? No, no, I did not. Well, he was. Hmm? To a woman named uh, Edith, a woman a bit older than he was. Oh? Yeah, it was this Doña Edith who was his patron as well as his wife. She uh, financed his exploration since Senior Harvey was young and he had no reputation. Oh. But what has all Patience, this... Patience, to... my friend. <laughs> Pardon. Uh, you know the Popo Young group of the Hibaro? Yes, yes, I know. Well, it was not known until ten years ago that they could shrink the heads of their enemies without the usual distortion. Uh, this too, I know. Well, Senor Harvey learned of their discovery and convinced Doña Edith that to be the first to secure several of these heads would ensure his reputation. <laughs> How fortunate to have such a patron, eh? Not so, Ramon. Oh, but why not? Because Doña Edith was a cruel woman. At no time did she forget to remind him that all he had was hers to give. And you must understand that. to this pest hole without a single civilized comfort to remind me that I am not a filthy native. But, Edith, I've done all I could. It has not been enough. We're going but back. But we'll be there tomorrow. You know what this means to me. To you? To you? What about to me? I didn't ask you to come along. No, you didn't. But I am paying for this miserable expedition, and don't you ever forget it. No, I won't. And if I choose to come along, that is my business. And if I choose to return now, that is also my business. But it's only one more day. If I have to go through one more day without washing my hair, well, I... We've think... been through this before. Yes, Edith, I, I know you have lovely hair. It's the longest, blondest, most beautiful hair I've ever seen. But I'm sick and tired of hearing you talk about it. Oh? Why don't you talk about what I'm trying to do? About how I've walked and sweated and rotted trying to make a career for myself. 
talk about the things I've sacrificed, about the comforts I've given up. Are you finished? Yes. But... Oh, I'm sorry, Edith. I, I didn't mean oh, to... Oh, stop it, Frank. Don't be a hypocrite. You're not sorry and you know it. Don't worry, you can have your one day more, but only one more. Tomorrow night, we start back. Edith. What do you want? I'll see what I can do about a place for you to clean up when we get there. Thank you. Well, we've been here almost all day. I told you we were wasting our time. But you can't rush these people. They've got till sundown. If they're not here by then, I'm leaving. They'll be here. That's what the drums are for. It takes time to relay messages to the tribal centers. As I said, sundown. But you can't start back at night. You'd get lost as soon as you left the clearing. I might, but Al Farrow wouldn't. Al Farrow? But he's my... He's my, my guy. I'm paying him. And he'll take me wherever I want to go and whenever I want to go. Can't you forget about your money for one minute? <laughs> You wouldn't be here if it weren't for my money. And while we're on the subject, let me tell you about my latest decision. Decision? Yes. I've decided that this is the last trip you'll make. I can't stand them anymore. But I told you, you don't have to come along. I, I know it isn't fair for you to have to go through all this. That's why there won't be any more trips. I can't go alone, is that it? Exactly. Exactly. So you had better make this try a good one. There won't be another dime for me. Look, Edith, Alfaro rigged some sort of a shower deal down near the stream. Why don't you freshen up a bit? Maybe we can talk this over a little later when you feel better. There's nothing to talk over. You have until Sunday. Why must you always... Senor, they are here. Look, the West Trail. The Popoyan. Good, good, Alfaro. Uh, take them over the trunks. I'll be there in a minute. Si, sí, senor. Well, Edith, they're here. I heard. You see, darling, I told you they... It been... doesn't alter my decision. As I said before, you have until sundown. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be ready. The toughest part is over. Pack up, Edith. We leave at sundown. I have done as you requested. The trunks are unlocked and the trade goods are ready to show. Good. Have you talked to the chief? See, si, and we must hurry. They start back to the village by nightfall. Well, that's all right. We'll have what we want by then. First off, uh, who do we trade with? Uh, the whole group or just the chief? Well, the chief, senor. That is the rule of the Hivaro people. I see. Well, let's get started. Call the chief up here and open the small trunk first. Oh, senor Harvey, to do that would be the insult. We must take the trunk to him. Well, all right. All right, come on. Easy, don't you? Yes, <laughs> Well, okay, tell the chief we're honored by his presence, that we have some things for him that will make him very happy. And tell him, Alfaro, that it would make me very happy if he would give me in exchange a, a sample or two of his very famous handiwork. What did he say, Alvaro? He said he will wait and see what you have to trade. All right, let's start with the small trunk first. Show him the knives. Yes, yes, Senor Harvey. Uh, tell him these knives are made of the finest metal and there's one for every member of the tribe. Si. San Calibendo Marisa Mohuru, Campuesta Mose, Fande Pulcuara Rinto. Nado. He said, no, Senor Harvey. Huh. Well, then let's go to the mirrors in the bottom of the trunk. But hurry, we haven't much time. I, I don't know why we've had so much trouble. We've shown them everything we have. What's wrong with him? He said we have nothing good to drink. He's crazy. You tell him there must be something here he wants. Go tell him. I, I cannot. To contradict the chief is to die. The... No, senor, we have failed. Sundown has come. All right, then. Well, uh, tell him I'll be back in a few weeks. Ask him what he wants me to bring back. Uh, ask him if he'll meet us in the clearing when I, I get... Go, Frank. 
Alfaro, get the rest of the boys together. You're coming with us, Frank. Give me a few minutes, Edith. I want to tell the chief I'll be back. You won't be back. And then what I said this afternoon. Well, then give me a minute or two to break off the meeting. It's too risky to get up and leave abruptly. These people live by ritual. You've they... got five minutes. Alfaro? Yes, si, senora. I want you in the clearing in five minutes. Whether Mr. Harvey is with you or not, do you understand? Uh, I understand. I'll expect you. Remember. Five minutes, Frank. Alfaro, tell the chief what I... Rogo my evento. What does he want? He says he wishes to trade. Tell him, Alfaro. Tell him he can have all the trunks, everything, anything. Miru ganivendo se fende. Bravo. Ask him what he wants, then. Custama bondo vendar. Amaro kenda si estama venga undo sayo orga esquivaro. Nado, nado. What is it, Alfaro? I cannot tell you, senor. I cannot. Tell me, you. Please, senor. I said, tell me. He said, he said that he will give you, give you ten heads. Go on, go on. He will give you ten heads for the head of the blonde woman who just walked out of here. Tell him that the woman who just walked out of here is, is my wife. Si, senor Harvey. Ondo salores estombo sendimo. Udo que está mi san orgas de velo, vendamo que mare san que fanda. Does he understand, Alfaro? No, senor. What do you mean? He said, uh, understand, senor. I only tell you what you want to know. He said, what good is a wife if you cannot trade her for something you want very much? <laughs> It's good to see you back. We've missed you at the museum. Welcome home. Thanks, Clifton. I'm terribly sorry about Edith. Yes, I know. I wish I could have brought her home for a decent burial. But she died four days from the Papoyan village. Too bad you failed when you were so close to success. I didn't fail, Clifton. Well, what do you mean? I brought you ten of the Papoyan heads. <laughs> We will return to Escape and tonight's story in just a moment. Add Godfrey to anything and it comes out fun. Tomorrow night, add to Arthur Godfrey's merrymaking the talents of a songbird, a tenor, a lyric soprano, and a vocal instrumental group. And it comes out another sparkling 30 minutes of pleasure with Arthur Godfrey's talent scouts. Be sure to be here tomorrow night on most of these same CBS radio stations. And now, back to Escape. How do you know of what has been done by Senor Harvey? And why should it make the despair upon you? Huh? Oh, I can answer but one question at a time, my friend. Oh, forgive me. Now, have I not already told you that the madness is upon the Senor? See, si, you have. Well, there you are. My cousin twice removed on my wife's side, he's with the police. His lips that I learned what Senor Harvey has told Vencerado, the chief of police. Eh, si, si. But again, I must ask, what has this to do with you? I will tell you. Gracias. Senor Harvey acted as a man desolate with grief at the loss of his wife, Doña Edith. But his reputation was assured when he returned with the ten Popoyan shrunken heads. But see, naturally. Now, all this was almost ten years ago. Uh, 
Hey, one thing, Manuel. Uh, what is that, Don Romo? What if Alfaro? Why did uh, he not tell her what happened? Foolish, Ramon, not to know how silence can be bought with money. Oh, no. Of course. <laughs> Continue. Besides, Alfaro died of the fever of the jungle not two years after. Oh, I... And so, Senor Harvey embraced the world. But never did he return to Peru, Ecuador, or Colombia. Eh. Then why did I you... am coming to that, please. Oh, I am rude. Eh, forgive me. Forgive him. For almost ten years he was alone. Then he met and married the woman, Doña Gloria, whom we know. Soon after the wedding, he was called to the office of Senor Clifton of the International Museum. It was there that the beginning of what was... If it's true, there should be a wealth of information about the conquistador Orellana, Pizarro's lieutenant, who died over 400 years ago. Uh, you know how I feel about going to Ecuador. Surely, Frank, but... Uh, besides, is... Gloria and I want a honeymoon. We haven't really had one. Well, we could make the trip to Ecuador our honeymoon, dear. No, you don't understand, Gloria. It was in Ecuador. That... I do understand, Frank. That's why I want to go. I want to be there with you. To help you fight whatever it is that's kept you away all these years. You can't fight it alone. Please let me help you. I... I can't do it. You've got to. There isn't a man in the profession that's as good at evaluating a find as you are. What about Carson? I want you. Richards is available. He can stay available. I want you. Please, Frank. Exactly what would you want me to do down there? Good boy. You won't regret I haven't said I was going. Tell me what you want done first. Just this. Go to the village we mentioned, pick up the guide, and check the spot where Oriano was supposed to have had his main camp over 400 years ago. Then what? Well, that's it. If what this native stumbled on is really the old Oriano base camp, then there should be enough material around to fill in a blank spot in the story of the conquest of the Incas. That's all? That's all. Just check the authenticity of the find. All right, I'll do it. But I warn you, I'm traveling light. No digging equipment. I'll... Check the find and send you a report within a week. Let somebody else dig the curios out. Fine, fine. You'll take care of the passports, visas, and clearances with the Ecuadorian authorities. You won't have to do a thing but pack. How soon do you want me to leave? Well, how soon can you get ready? Gloria? Whenever you're ready, dear. Three days, Clifton. Three days it is. Frank. Yes? Thank you. It's all right. I didn't realize Ecuador meant so much to you. It does. Very much. We've been cooped up in this stinking hotel for a week now. Frank, dear, sit down. I can't sit down. If it hadn't been for the rain, I'd have been in and out of the village two days ago. But it is raining, and we have to stay here. Please don't torture me. Oh, yourself. Gloria, please, leave me alone. Well, I don't mean to bother you, Frank. It, I, I just hate to see you like this. Do you think I like being but this way? Of course not. But if you, you'd only relax... Oh, Gloria, please. Must you drink so much you've been drinking? <laughs> Will you shut up? If I want to drink, I'll drink. I'm sorry, Frank. Then why don't you think about what you're going to say before you say it? Then you wouldn't have to be so everlastingly sorry all the time. I was only trying to help. I don't need any help. Frank, what's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Oh, Frank, darling, don't. This trip wasn't my idea. Remember that. Now, where's that other glass? Oh, here. Frank? What? It stopped raining. Let me see. Good. Where are you going? To the village to get my guide. I should be back in a few days. Is, is there anything I can do? Yes. Be packed and ready to leave for home as soon as I return. Is that all? And that's all. I'll see you in a few days. Brian. Yeah? Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Huh? Oh. Yes, of course. Lots of luck, darling. Yeah. 
Thanks. Goodbye. Welcome, Senora. Welcome to the curio shop of Manuel Furtado. How may I be of service? Well, I'm I'm looking for a gift for a, a friend. My shop is yours, Senora. And well, I, I'd like something unique. Ah. <laughs> you have come to the only place in Quito where it can be found. This way, please, Senora. <laughs> Here is a dagger, very, very old, worn by Fernando Aguilar, a trusted lieutenant of the conquistador Ben Alcazar. Mm. Mm, it's handsome. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't a relic like this be in a museum? It should, senora. But Manuel Fuertado has a friend or two in the savage heart of Ecuador, and occasionally I manage to acquire some small tokens such as this. Mm. I, I don't think I've... Ever seen one like it? Of course not. It is the dagger of Aguilar. Observe the tracery of silver. Mm -hmm. How delicately the setting embraces the precious stones. <laughs> mm. Truly, it is magnificent. Mm, yes, it is. But it, uh, it, it's not what I'm looking for. Mm. Then here. This necklace... Oh. Caress the throat of the daughter of Atahualpa, one of the greatest of the Incas. Mm, exquisite. Senora, the word is not sufficient to describe its beauty. <laughs> I know. But I, I, I can't buy it. But why not? Well, I'm looking for something for a man. Oh, then the ducker is exactly the thing for him. No, that's not it either. I, I'm looking for something really unusual, really different. Oh, <laughs> If the senora requires something unusual, would she be interested in an article which my friends from the interior consider unusual, too? Oh, yes. It is quite expensive. Well, I'll pay anything within reason. It will cost somewhat more than you may be prepared to pay. Well, why don't you let me be the judge of that? Very well, then, senora, if you will follow me. <laughs> Exactly five days. It's been five years. For me, too. Well, what about the Oriana treasure? The real thing. I checked it pretty carefully. Oh, Clifton will be pleased. Clifton. Any one of a half dozen men could have done what I did. Oh, he didn't think so. No, I do. I need a drink. Uh, I found a bottle of Jameson in a little store around the corner. Irish? Great. Where? In the cabinet over there. I'll get it. Let's get out of here. If I have to stay here another day, I'll lose my mind. Just as soon as you're ready, dear. That's right now. Frank, don't you think... Think what? I, uh... Why, well, I... I'm drinking too much? Go ahead and say it. Oh, no, 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 it's not that. It's nothing. I, I have a surprise for you. A uh, surprise? Mm -hmm. I found it at a curio shop in town. Where is it? Close your eyes. Why? Oh, well... Play the game my way, or you don't get it at all. All right. But it better be good. It will be. I shut. Shut. Oh, give me a hand. Here. Follow me. Now, open. Where did you get it? A, a man. <laughs> A man with friends in the interior. He said... Don't tell me what he said. I know what he said. But Frank... He told you, didn't he? He told you about her. Her? I don't understand. Her, her. The head. He told you. Frank. He told you, didn't he, didn't he? Now you know what happened to her. Please, Frank. Or did you have it figured out all the time? You and Clifton. That's what it was. You both knew about it before we even came here. Why I didn't want to come back. Why I was... Stop it. Stop it. And you it, set it up. Clifton. 
to make me tell. You thought I'd see the head. And I'd tell you. Tell that I killed Edith. Frank, you, you killed Edith. That's her. Look. Go on. Look at her. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Frank, I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. Gloria. Gloria. Gloria! That, my friend, is why I am upset. Ah, I see, I see. But what can I do? Life must go on. Yeah, true, true. Well, I must tear myself away. I have other customers to visit. Oh, please, Manuel, uh, can you give me your order now? Huh? Oh, of course. Ah, what is it you want this month? Huh? Oh, my stock is moving a little slow this month. So for now, just give me uh, three of the Fernando Aguilar daggers. Eh, uh, see, si, see. Si. Mm, five of the Atahualpa necklaces. Eh, uh, see. Si. That will be all? Mm, that will be all. Ah. Hey, Ramon. Hey, what is it, Manuel? I almost forgot something. Oh, what? Uh, make me up half a dozen shrunken heads. Uh, see, see, I will do that. Yeah, oh, uh, Ramon. Uh, see, Manuel? Make one of them blonde again. I like to have one in stock for the customer who wants something unusual. <laughs> Under the direction of Anthony Ellis, Escape has brought you Incident in Quito by Ross Murray, starring Larry Thor as Frank Harvey. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Edgar Berrier, Don Diamond, Faye Baker, Jack Crucian, and Tony Barrett. Editorial supervision is by John Meston, and the special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are lying in a wartime prison camp, surrounded by a desperate and brutal enemy. While your own forces are slowly approaching to save you, your frightened captives are planning to kill you. So listen next week when Escape brings you Anthony Ellis's exciting story, Four Went Home. <laughs> If you don't know the difference between a hawk and a horse, that, as the pundits say, is a horse on you. And if you don't know the difference between CBS Radio's Bob Hawk and any ordinary quiz master, then you'd better take steps. Yes, take steps right to your radio Monday nights and enjoy the quips, the quiz, the merriment of the Bob Hawk Show on most of these same CBS radio stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, America now listens to 105 million radio sets and listens most to the CBS Radio Network.